Hello, 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 and welcome to Relationship Rhetoric. I'm your host, Unapologetically Angela. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, We are going to start this month off and finish the month off with some of the most amazing creations in mankind, our men and their need to take care of themselves, not just physically, but mentally, spiritually. You know, we spend a lot of time, women, talking about ourselves and we put a lot of effort into self-care for women, but we are on this planet with our um, brothers. And when I say brothers, I don't necessarily just mean black men, but of course the special place in my heart for black men, but all men need to be able to um, have a healthy way of life, a healthy way of thinking, a healthy way of healing and being able to do certain things without being um, cursed with the stigma of what self-care looks like. So, you know, I really honor a brother that'll go and get his nails done or who gets facials and who takes time to sit outside and meditate and write in his journal and things of that nature. So hopefully this month, speaking to the people that I'm speaking to, that will open up some doors where men can have conversations and uh, seek those services out. So we're going to kick up this month with um, a man that I hold to my heart very dearly. Um, just he plants seeds of wisdom in me on a regular basis. So I thought he'd be a great way to start off this month and encourage our brothers to seek out uh, ways to better take care of themselves. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Pastor Wayne Gillard. Hi. Good afternoon. Hey, hey, how you doing there? I'm well. Yes, guys, it is afternoon. This is a pre-recorded show. I should have said that, but you know, it's all good. Um, Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I could not think of another person that I could actually have this conversation with because to me, you fit right like the scene that's in between us. You fit in that that realm. Your age is one thing, but the way that you handle yourself goes a lot older than who you truly are. So I just feel like your perspective could really hit so many different age groups and personalities. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So when I say self-care and particularly for men, what does that look like to you? Okay, well, let's first identify what self-care is. Um, There's a lot of definitions that go out there, um, and it's usually associated with luxurious baths and going out and spending five, six hundred dollar packages on the spa and things like that. But ultimately, self-care is discovering practices that help you. That helps the individual to nurture and connect with themselves. And it pulls them away from their lengthy to-do list. The great thing about self-care is that at its core, it's the act of self-initiated routines. And Mm. notice I'm putting an emphasis on the self-initiated routines because um, self-care is all about one person, and that's the self. And then we have to make sure that it's something that we're doing that benefits us as an individual not necessarily putting other people in the the the, the formula of what's going to make me happy, what's going to make me happy, what's going to make me feel good, what's going to make me, you know, be my higher self is all about what I do. So that's why the self-initiated is so important. But then it's a routine. It's a routine. It's a practice that improves your physical, mental, social, and or emotional well-being. Um, <clears throat> so, and I, I like to say routine because self-care is not first aid. Um, self-care mm. is medicine. Uh, I'm going to say that again. Self-care is not first aid. It is preventative medicine. And a lot of times people will go and they'll, they'll work, you know, a long day or have a long and say, oh, my God, I need some self-care. We shouldn't look at self-care as a remedy to stress as far as we're going to do it after the fact. But self-care should be preventative. It should be something that we do at the forefront. Self-care is proactive. And when we do these things, then those long weeks, those tough conversations, those heavy crowds, it's not as much on us because we've implemented the practice of self-care. I want to uh, end with that. We're just saying practice practice and self-care allows us to recharge, achieve balance. It allows us to remain in tune with our mind and with our bodies And it helps us develop a routine of nurturing habits that maintain an overall good health. And that's why it's so important as men that we recognize that self-care is for everybody. 
just like um, a, a man should go to his uh, primary care doctor, I, I hope often, <laughs> um, so should you practice self-care. It's not just a gender specified thing. Um, it's something that we should be doing as men, uh, if not on a daily basis, at least a weekly basis as men. And, and we'll talk more about what some self-care habits are, what some things you can do for self-care. But just overall, self-care is ju it's just as important as eating uh, breakfast or eating a meal every day. Um, men, we cannot walk away and say, well, self-care is not for me. And it's not, it's not something we see. And one of my goals is to uh, brighten the light on men practicing self-care um, and encouraging men to take care of themselves. Because if we're going to be the breadwinner, if we're going to be the protector, if we're going to be the provider, um, I like to tell my men that I hang around that, look, you're the priest, you're the prophet, you're the pastor, you're the protector, you're the provider. But in order for you to do all those things, you have to make sure you're squared away. You have to make sure that you're A1. And I can't be the best father that I'm capable of being if I'm tired, of, I'm, I'm overworked, I'm stressed out, or I hit a place of burnout because I'm not doing my daily self-care habits. Okay. So as I was listening to you talk, let me say this to you guys. Um, <laughs> Wayne is a life coach. Wayne is a pastor. Wayne is a father. Wayne is a business owner. So he speaks from not only a great place of training, but from a great place of experience. So my next question to you, Wayne, with all of those hats that you carry, why do you think men don't think that self-care is for them? I think in general, there is a stigma um, around manhood and being able to express themselves um, and also taking care of themselves. On one hand, I think the stigma with men not expressing themselves come from as as a boy, you know, men don't cry, uh, mm -hmm. tough, stuff. Uh, don't don't wear your feelings on your sleeve and all that good stuff, and it has its place, but it, I feel like it's done more harm than good because now you have a generation of men, um, and I, and I say a generation of men my age, but then you also have our elders who want to be so manly and so tough that they will walk around with ashy feet because men don't put on lotion. Like, it's just stupid. I mean, we'll, we'll walk around with ashy kneecaps because we're supposed to be tough and we're supposed to be rough. And, and I, I agree to some extent, yeah, as a man, you do have to have some toughness. You do have to have some roughness. But I think it goes more toward a mental toughness, not a toughness of your skin, not a toughness of your, like, it's okay to have um, soft hands as a man, you know? Um, it does not make you any less of a man because you don't want dirt in your fingernails. It does not make you less of a man because you like to wash your face in the morning and brush your teeth. Believe it or not, those are self-care practices. Um, just taking a hot towel, putting it on your face is self-care. And so I think as men, we we try to stray away from those things. One, because we're told, you know, be a man, toughen up. But then when you look at the media, I mean, if you Google self-care, you're going to get a thousand images of women and probably one or two men. And so it's perceived to be that this is not a, a male typical behavior. Um, but again, that's one of my goals as a life coach, as a pastor, as a human being, is to encourage men to take care of yourself. Um, and, and the great thing about it, again, like I already said, with the self-care, it's based off of what meets your needs, not necessarily what is perceived to be a good self-care practice. Um, or, or what, when you Google these images, you will see luxurious baths and bath bombs and bath salts and body scrubs and eucalyptus mints hanging over the shower. And we're like, oh my God, that's not man stuff. Like, no, nah, man, I, a, a simple, easy, um, quote unquote, manly life hack. Man, just cook, cook you some eggs and potatoes, man. Cook you a nice dinner. Like, cook yourself something that you would enjoy. Uh, it does not have to be so flamboyant in a sense. It, it could be something very simple. And so I think when we look at it like that, that straight, that, that makes me and kind of stray away from the self-care practices. Okay. So this is may, may sound like a shameless plug, but it, it makes a lot of sense to me. So if a man is struggling with trying to identify what he can, what can be part of his self-care routine without feeling less of a man or 
you know, men also have a tendency if I take time out to take care of myself, that I'm not taking care of my other responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Is finding a life coach or talking to a life coach something that will help them through that process? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like one of the things I like to share about life coaching, it's all about finding a place where people find themselves stuck and just mm-hmm. helping them navigate through that process. And, and actually my company is called Life Quest Coaching because we help people navigate the quest of life. And I found that a lot of men find themselves at that place where like, hey, I want to be the provider for my family, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, I need to take a break. And if I take off on Friday, I won't be making the money that I need to take care of my family. And and as a coach, I go through a series of questions, one, to identify, okay, why do you feel that you, not every man, but why do you feel that you can't take a eight hours off, take four hours off to benefit yourself. And then I put it in this, this perspective. If you don't take care of yourself, eventually we know, we're no, we know what's going to happen. Eventually it's going to weigh you down physically, mentally, emotionally, where unfortunately you can find yourself in a life or death situation. And so if your concern, if your ultimate priority is taking care of your family, then what good are you going to be if you're dead because you struck Mm. out? What Mm. good are you going to be if you are so physically ill you can't go to work? What good are you going to be if you're so stressed out that every time your child or your significant other asks you a question, you lash out at them? That's not taking care of your family. What's taking care of your family is saying, hey, I've done my 12 hours. I've done my 16-hour work shift. Let me take four hours and, and pull back from something so that when my kids say, hey, dad, can you play the game with me? It's not, well, wait till I get through taking a nap. Or it's not, wait till I finish this one other assignment. Or it's not, wait till I, you know, get through cutting the grass. It's, I have enough rest now that, yeah, I can dedicate this hour, this 20 minutes, this 10 minutes to spending time with my family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... A small step. Would you consider men, even though it's something that they do on a regular basis, going to get a haircut? Please, please, please. I, I, look, look. I, I don't. Y'all caught me in the middle of the week, okay? <laughs> Barbershop appointments are on Thursdays for, for Wayne, so you, you caught me on a bad day. But let's, let me, fellas, y'all know when we get our haircut, man, we we go from feeling like blah. So, man, we get that haircut. We riding with the windows down. We want to get stopped at every red light. We find ourselves going to Walmart and Target for no reason. Tell me, I knew I needed a light bulb. Man, you don't need no light bulb. You just feel good. And you mm-hmm. want other people to see that you feel good. And so something as simple as getting a lineup. I ain't even saying a haircut. Something as simple as getting a lineup makes you feel better. It makes you just want to get out and explore. It makes you want people to see you because you feel good. So you're right. It's something that we do often, such as getting a haircut, that we do not equate to self-care. Mm-hmm. But that is that is the basis. That's the definition of self-care right there. Hmm. So what advice or how could women that, you know, have men that they love in their lives. How can we help uh, encourage men to take time for themselves without like we're nagging or, you know, pushy? How Mm -hmm. can we, if if I wanted to suggest to you that you do something, how can I do that without or with a way that you could take it in a good way? Um, I would definitely say, man, start with asking questions. It's all about communication. And so if you're my significant other and you want me to do something or you want to do something for me that's going to benefit me, begin by asking what that thing is. Um, Hmm. And so as a I would encourage women um, so that it won't come off as nagging to come off as a question like, hey, if you had a whole day free, what would you do? Um, If you had, you know, 20 minutes free, what would you do? And. Honor what's said. Honor what's said. Because, again, self-care is about the person. And so they may say, well, if I had a free 20 minutes, I would just want to watch an episode of my favorite TV show. Let Mm. them do that because that's self-care. If they Mm. say, I would like to spend a whole day at the lake, let them do that because that's self-care. But it's going to be different for every man. 
And it's going to be different depending on the time. It's going to be different depending on what's going on in their lives and things like that. But I would say starting off asking those questions and then finding ways to make those things happen. You know, um, there, there's something about it. I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I can't give you the scientific definition or anything like that. But it's something about like if a man enjoys watching, I don't know, um, Game of Thrones, like if that's his thing, there is nothing. I mean, it's so, I can't explain. It. It's like speechless to come home and Netflix is already tuned in to Game of Thrones with a, a ice cold drink or a beer or and then a nice snack. And all your man has to do is sit down and watch TV. There's something special about that. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. And I know we kind of shift away from the question, but it works together. I believe women are just powerful creatures. Like whatever you give them, they multiply it. Uh, whether that's good or bad, but men are the same way. Like, hey, women, you want your man? Look, I know you've been telling him to fix that cabinet for the past six months. I guarantee you, fix that man a cold beer and rub on his feet and watch them cabinets get fixed. He gonna come and paint the cabinet. You have a whole new kitchen because he done got he done got twenty minutes of not being this rough, this tough, this I gotta have it done. But he gets this time to really be himself. He gets this time to feed the inner core of who he is, who we sometimes cannot be because all the other hats that we wear. Um, and and I, I'll, I'll say this, too. You mentioned at the beginning, like, hey, Wayne's a pastor. He's a business owner. He's a father. He's a life coach. And really, throughout my day, and, and this applies to most men, I'm either addressed as Mr. Gillard, Reverend Gillard, Pastor Gillard, Coach Giller, Daddy, Baby, I'm very rarely addressed as Wayne. And so the core of who I am, Wayne does not get much attention. Because mm -hmm. when I'm Mr. Gillard, I'm acting as CEO. When I'm father, I'm at, when I'm called father, called dad, I'm acting as father, I'm acting as dad. When I'm called baby, I'm acting as baby. But I never get a chance to be Wayne. I never get a chance to say, ooh, this is my favorite TV show. Or, uh, ooh, this is my favorite snack. I mean, honestly, we just left, we just came in from the grocery store and I asked my boys what y'all want. And they said, we wanted some cupcakes. I got them some cupcakes. I said, can I have some? You would have seen the way they looked at me. And I'm like, well, I like cupcakes too. But guess what? As fathers, as parents, a lot of times we do stuff that benefits everybody in the household, but don't do anything to benefit us at all. And honestly, even in this moment, I'm thinking like, like, I could have gotten what I wanted from the store, but I wasn't thinking about Wayne. I was thinking I have to get stuff for the kids. I have to make sure they're fed for dinner. I have to make sure that the, the house has food for them, not necessarily for me. And so that goes back to just what I'm saying. Like we carry these hats and we, we want to wear these hats well that oftentimes we forget to carry the most important hat. And that's the one that's the true effect of who we are down to the core. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a funny, but I'm going to say it anyway. Now, listen, I'm sure a lot of us don't mind rubbing on your feet and all this other type of thing. But brothers, <laughs> the self-care part of that is don't get offended when we say, can you get these feet done? You know, know that it's coming, knowing that, you know, we want to do it. But if your toenails are taken off the first layer of my skin... <laughs> That's a whole other thing. Whole other thing. I feel you. Hey, <laughs> look, see, hey, we we just having fun here. We women, I, I love to rub on your leg, but but sometimes I put a little race to it. That's my preference. So yeah, hey, same thing, fellas. If, if your woman wants to say, hey, I'll rub on your feet, but you need to go see see the folks down there at the pedicure shop first. Don't don't take it as a slap in the face. Man, really, man, look at it as something. Like if a woman, and here's the thing about a woman. If she is that detailed that she notices that, hey, these minor cosmetic things could be improved upon, if they're saying something to you, it's not they're trying to put you down. It's not that they're hating on you. They want you to be the best version of yourself. And I'll be honest with you, fellas, it's hard to be the best version of yourself when you're walking on concrete, when, you, when your feet, when you when you in the bed and your feet start sounding like a a, a, a scratching drum, 
because you're rubbing your feet together. That's why you can't sleep at night. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, you, you can't sleep because your feet keeping you up at night because they rub together. Every time you move, you think somebody coming to the house, man, that's just your feet scratching the sheets, man. Put some lotion on them bad boy. We laughing, but I'm so serious. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like there is nothing like letting those toes men soak in some hot water. Let that stress melt away. There's and nothing. So, go ahead. Go ahead. And something else, even beyond that, Wayne, I've known so many men who once they go and get their feet done, that they find out there's a medical issue that they're dealing with with their feet that you couldn't notice or pay attention to because you've let your feet go. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, we are being funny, but that's serious. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I'll share this story. I actually took my dad for the very first time uh, back in March of this year. Uh, it was it was my gift to him. He was getting ready to get married. I took him to get a pedicure. And you should have heard the conversation the days leading up to it. And my God, the day at the place, man, you should have heard the conversation. Man, I don't want nobody to think I'm this and I don't want this. I don't want nobody rubbing my feet. Man, this man is at the nail shop every week now. <laughs> because it, it it not only does it feel good but Angela like you said there is a medical component to it that man you, you realize like something as simple as making sure your toes and your feet are done and, and it's crazy though because here, here's one thing I found out about it being in the military um, they actually do feet checks like they make you do this thing called toe the line where they pretty much examine your feet because your feet are important. Like you, you, you being out in the field for several days with dirty feet, it's bad for your, your health. And so they make, they make sure there's no fungus they make sure there's no cuts, no bruises, so on and so forth. And so even in the military, we're taught rough, 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 but they still want you to take care of your feet. Mm -hmm. And I, I know we've been spending a lot of time talking about feet. That's not just what self-care is. Um, self-care goes beyond just taking care of your feet. Again, it's, it's getting a nice shave, it's washing your face, it's getting a massage, it's, you know, eating the right foods. That's self-care. Um, sitting down, resting, watching your favorite TV show, spending time, you know, playing the video games, spending time even hanging out with your, your boys, having that social time. That could be forms of self-care. Spending time in prayer, spending time in meditation, spending time writing in a journal. That's self-care. Um, spending time just sitting outside, allowing the breeze of the air to blow through you. That's self-care. Um, going to, if you if you are a Chevrolet guy and you want to drive a Camaro, go test drive that bad boy. That's self-care. So, so when we look at self-care, there's really no limitation on what qualifies for self-care as long as it's care that's putting the self first. Um, and one, I, I just want to address my brothers now because I, I have the floor. Um, something else that's self-care that costs us absolutely nothing. So we can't use the excuse of I don't have the money. Um, this thing actually costs us no time. So we can't use the excuse of I don't have time. But self-care in the sense of creating boundaries and being mm -hmm. true to ourself. That, that, is, that is one self-care practice that I've actually went through the process of doing. And I encourage my other brothers to do it. Is This is self-care as well. No, nah, guys, I can't hang out with y'all tonight because guess what? I don't even really like drinking beer like that. I've been drinking beer with y'all because y'all my boys and I like y'all. Y'all cool, but I hate beer. Standing up for yourself saying, hey, I don't really like this type of activity. I don't really like this type of crowd. That's self-care. Even in, a lot, in, in your relationships, letting your significant other know, hey, you know what? I don't really get jiggy with this. This is not, this is not good for me. This is not healthy for me speaking up saying okay what works for you and what doesn't work for you and i'm not saying being closed-minded but i'm saying like if if you know that i don't know um doing a particular thing over and over and over again is wearing you down and you're just trying to do it to keep peace you're killing yourself literally you're killing yourself and what what's truly going to happen is when the tables turn and those good days turn into not so good days all of that frustration that we've built up because we didn't speak up for ourselves, it's going to lash out. And then where 
something that could have been a simple conversation of, hey, this is not really my cup of tea. It's going to turn into a whole blowout. And next thing you know, you and your significant other are fighting over because there's a spoon left in the sink. And we know mm -hmm. that spoon ain't got nothing to do with nothing. That spoon ain't mm -hmm. did nothing to nobody. But mm -hmm. that's self-care. Self-care is saying, hey, I, I, I can't do these things. I need to rest. I can't do these things. I need to focus on this. So, again, self-care is all about what you have to do to take care of you, to put yourself first. Self-care is not selfish. Self-care is self full it's uh, it's about taking that time and making sure that your cup is full as a man before you pour into anybody else's cup. It's making sure that you are charged up before you charge somebody else up. It's making sure that your plate is full of your steak, potatoes, broccoli, cheese, all this stuff that we like to eat that is full versus trying to make it make sure everybody else eat because what ends up happening is we'll be left with the crumbs of life. Mm. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out why we're still hungry. Mm. We'll be left with the, the driplets of water in our cup, wondering why we're still thirsty. Take some time to make sure that your cup and plate is full first. And I promise you, those that are around you, that are concerned about you, that care about you, and that benefit from you, are going to benefit from you so much more if they're eating off of your overflow and not off your scraps. Mm. 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 I'm a, let me say that one more time. If, if, if you take care of yourself first, the people that are connected to you will be eating off of your full cup, your full table, your full plate, and not off the crumbs that you have left because you don't get your job 80% of what you got. You don't hmm. get your, your fraternity or your community organization 10%. And now you're trying to give 5% to your kids. There's only 5% left. And now you're trying to divvy up 5% over 30 things that ain't going to work. That ain't going to happen. That ain't, that ain't good for you. It's not. So, so being able to say, you know what, this is where we're going to draw the line. Uh, job. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. I appreciate my little 17, 15 hour, but I work eight to five, baby. Five thirty to six thirty. me and my kids time. I'm not checking no emails for you. That's self-care. Those are things that are self-care that we don't necessarily look at and say, Oh, I didn't realize that self-care is anything you're doing that you are positioning yourself to take care of yourself first. Um, one last thing. <clears throat> I have noticed a lot of people, especially people in um, church positions, pastors, evangelists, um, people of any type of position that requires them to be selfless. You know, what do you think or, yeah, what do you think God's view is on us taking care of ourselves as his creation. Do you think we should be more? I mean, it's going to against the opposite of what we're talking about. Mm. So, so, so let, let, let's, let's do this like this. Let me ask you a question. Uh, for those people who are in those positions in general, would they believe that they are created in the image and likeness of God? Mm. Believe they would say yes. They would say yes. Right. Yes. And did or did not God say, you know what? I done did a lot of stuff for six mm. days. Mm -hmm. On the seventh mm -hmm. day, I'm going to sit down somewhere. Mm -hmm. Did mm -hmm. he not? He did. And so he biblically, did. biblically, if we are created in the image and likeness of God, meaning that we behave and that we do things with the character of God, the character of God said, I'm going to take rest. Not because I need it. Here you go, because I all you preachers say, well, God is sovereign and he's supreme and he don't need no rest. It wasn't because he needed rest, but he understood the purpose and the, the promise of rest. He understood that the, the value behind doing a job and then sitting down somewhere, taking that time off. And so if we preachers, pastors, bishops, apostles, missionaries, deacons, trustees, choir directors, presidents of the, the drama club, whatever your position is at the church, listen. You are no good. Listen, I'm, I'm sorry. You ain't good to God if you're in the hospital bed because you don't stroke yourself out. How are you benefiting the kingdom of God if you are so tired from doing church work or doing things where you're up, you're up at three, four o'clock in the morning doing sermon prep? Then you go on a hospital visit. Then you got prayer calls. Then you got conferences. Then you got to do sermon prep. How are you truly benefiting God's kingdom? How are you truly benefiting the people of God? Again, if you're feeding us off your crumbs, 
Mm. If you're feeding the people of God from your scraps, then are you really feeding them? Mm. Or are we just getting what's opportune? Are we get are we getting the best version of the man or woman of God that God called? Or are we getting what's left over from you being exasperated and everything else that you're a part of? Mm. You know, I, I really think that when it comes to self-care, when it comes to, you know, um, men and women of the gospel who, who do these things, I know we like to throw this out a, a lot. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Hallelujah. We like to say that. Well, first off, we've got to understand that everything we're doing ain't for God. Mm. Um, well, that's one thing. And then you got to look at the context of what Paul was talking about. I'm, I'm not going to preach it today. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there, but we have to look at the context of what Paul was talking about. And, and, and Paul was not saying that I had to be a superhero because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That ain't what he was talking about. As a matter of fact, Paul even knew I got to sit down somewhere. Paul knew I got to take some time to myself. Jesus knew that. You, 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 Jesus was like, hey, look, y'all, I know y'all got these little celebration stuff going on. But look, I'm going to go out to the wilderness for 40 days. I need mm. some I, I got to unplug from my, I got to unplug from everything and get to myself. Even when he was at the garden of Gethsemane, he said, hey, I need y'all to go over there and pray while I deal with some stuff. Because guess what? He understood. I had to, he, he had to, he had to do self-care. He had to plug away from everything else, plug away from his boys, plug away from his disciples, plug away from his people. And, and really what he did was he meditated and prayed. He, that's what he did. He practiced self care. So to your point, um, I think is, and I, I know the, the religious people are going to get upset with me. I think it's ungodly not to practice self care. I, I think it's ungodly not to dedicate time to take care of God's creation. Mm, mm, mm. I, I think as, as kingdom citizens, it is ungodly to be a kingdom citizen and not take pleasure in the things of the kingdom. I do. I, I do. I do. And uh, um, I leave my email address, my phone number, anybody that wants to disagree with that, y'all can call me, we can talk about it. But I just don't think that God is pleased with the 24 seven duties that we portray or that we do. And we don't put his, we are his children. We are his precious commodities. Why not take care of yourself? Because you are no, again, you're no good to nobody. If you burnt out, if you stroke out, if you dead, if you, you can't even get out the bed because your feet hurt so bad because you've been working so hard. Or you, you can't even pray. You can't even concentrate on your prayer because you're like, man, God, I'm so tired. Find some time to do self care and do whatever it takes. It's whatever it's going to need for you to do so that you are aligned, so that your body, your mind, your will, your emotions are aligned to your higher self, so that you can be the best version of who you can be for those that are connected to you. Okay. So <clears throat> several things. If mm -hmm. they want to contact you for life coaching, what mm -hmm. should they do? All right. So we are on social media, uh, Facebook. We are Life Quest Coaching. Uh, if you put us in the chat box, you can put Life Quest Coaching 1. Uh, same thing on Instagram. We're Life Quest Coaching on Instagram. You can always send us a direct message uh, on either one of those social media platforms. Also, our email address is info, I-N-F-O, at getinprogress.com. That's G-E-T-N, just the, just the letter N, progress.com. Uh, and one of our staff members will be able to get in touch with you. Once you reach out to us, we'll set you up a consultation. Uh, we do 30-minute consultations for free. And then once we do those consultations, if you feel that we'll be a great fit working with you as a coach, then we'll set you up a package plan where we can coach you, whether it's four sessions, eight sessions, 12 sessions or more. And I'm feeling this. I'm feeling it right now, Angela. What I want to do is anybody that sees this, that hears this, whether it's today, whether it's four months from now, if you mention this uh, show, if you mention men need self-care too, if you mention unapologetically Angela, if you mention, man, I saw you on some video, I don't know, you was talking about self-care. If you mention that, 
then I'm going to make sure that you get 50% off all of our services, okay? Oh, wow. I will yeah. give you 50% off. Um, I'm doing that for two reasons. One, Angela's my people. If you her people and she my people, you my people too, I'm going to take care of you. But man, is what most important is this. The reason I want to do 50% off is because men, I want us to get in line with life coaching, get in line with self-care. I want us as men to create a brotherhood that is not bound by colors, by creed, by pledges, but we are bound by one thing, and that's being better men. And so uh, I want to do that for you all. So anybody that sees this, you get 50% off. Make sure you let, let us know at some point in the conversation. Um, but other than that, that's how you can get in touch with us. One more thing. Yes, ma'am. This, this is going to be interesting. So you mentioned something about kingdom citizens and kingdom living. If mm -hmm. someone is interested in uh, figuring out or learning more about what you mean by that, how could they reach you? Same way. Uh, info at gettingprogress.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well. Wayne B. Gillard II. Shoot me a message of any of our social media pages mm -hmm. with LifeQuest Coaching. Uh, again, it's Facebook, LifeQuest Coaching 1. Instagram, LifeQuest Coaching. Uh, if they got your number and they can reach out to you, you can give them my contact information. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little, I'm a little eerie of putting my phone number out there. You know, somebody be calling me tonight, talking about some, I'm your Uber driver. So no, nah, don't worry about that. But uh, if they reach out to you, Angela, uh, I give you permission. You know, you vet. You can give them my contact information, my phone number, things like that. But anything, whether it's the the Kingdom Living part, the Kingdom Citizen, the life coaching, the uh, self care. Um, I even dabble into a little bit of business coaching, parent coaching, grief coaching, leadership coaching, spiritual coaching. I do a little bit of everything. And so if you're finding yourself with those questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, and even if it's not a, here's my belief, even if it's not of a long-term thing, if we don't, you know, go long-term and we work with each other for several years, having that one conversation is going to be beneficial. And so if you're interested, let's have that one conversation first. Let's have that one conversation that one conversation first and we'll go from there absolutely absolutely well thank you so much let me tell you this those of you that are listening to this when you have that one conversation i guarantee you it will not be your last conversation mark my word it will not be your last conversation thank you wayne i appreciate you making yourself available um i know it's daytime but they'll get it so you take this and you post it and we'll make sure that the brothers get the help that they need. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank Appreciate you for being it. That voice. I love you and I'll talk to you soon. Love you. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that they blessed you the way that it blessed me. Um, it is very important that, you know, we don't get so caught up in ourselves to realize that we're on this planet alone. We have to love and support each other. And even though I am a woman, even though I have a, I had a father, he's still my dad. And no matter where he's resting and residing, I'm the mother of a son. You know, I, I teach children. I teach boys on a regular basis. I have people like Wayne and other close men in my life. And I really can't say to you what my life would be like if I didn't have them. So it's very important that we work together to encourage our men to take care of themselves. Ladies, if it's someone in your life that you know needs to make a doctor's appointment and they won't get too bent out of shape, if you say, hey, let me make the appointment for you or I'll go with you or hey, let me make let's make a pedicure appointment together. We were joking about the feet, but I've known so many men who have gone and gotten a pedicure and realized that they were having some issues with their blood sugar, having some issue with some fungus that was hidden places and would, are losing toenails and toes. You know, so things that we seem to get so caught up on or <clears throat> think are gross and things of that nature. We are an adult. And we need to learn to take care of each other. And ladies, if we want our men to take care of us and understand that we need time, we also need to understand that they have a weight on their shoulder as well. A lot of us are a lot to deal with. So making sure that his Game of Thrones is on with his Frosty Pepsi is okay. You know, so let's do our part as well. Brothers, I want you to know that I love you. That does not that is not limited to a color, shape, or creed. Men, I love you. You men of honor. You men that are out here um, raising children, helping to nurture children, teaching, guiding, protecting. You are loved and you are appreciated. So please take some time today to do something simple for yourself. Take this entire month. If you don't feel like you can commit to it, like Wayne said, take one step. Take one step and do something special for yourself. And it's self-initiated. 
self-initiated. So thank you so much for joining me. I love you all. Peace, love, and care.